To run a successful bus company... Uh, 180, please. ..you need to follow three golden rules. Are you comfy? Rule number one, make sure your buses arrive on time. We're never going to get back in time. Not a chance. Road closures, diversions, it's fantastic. Everything's absolutely wonderful, as always. Rule number two, keep your buses on the road. What is this? She's been a little bit temperamental, but she will start. And rule number three, hire drivers with a real passion for the job. Oops, get in. Notice the registration number, EYH. Stands for East Yorkshire Hybrid. Very smooth to drive. You've got to be some kind of sadist to do this job anyway. Because if any buses coming out, we're going to get stuck. Yeah. It's not going to be a good day. <laughs> All to keep your customers happy. He's gone the wrong way, down the wrong way. Meet the men and women of East Yorkshire Motor Services. Where's my boss? <laughs> as they do their best to keep Yorkshire moving. Oh, my good Lord almighty. And there goes the peace and quiet. I just want to go home now. I've had enough. Yes, <laughs> right, I'm ready to go. Mind the doors. Tonight, when one of Europe's biggest travelling fairs comes to Hull, East Yorkshire's supervisor Brian Page clashes with their local competitors. We're always on the white land. The We're always on the white land. Sorry, mate, don't, don't film this. In Scarborough, as the summer season draws to a close, seafront supervisor Paul Fryatt throws a party with a twist. Oh, yeah, Paul's stripping tonight, isn't he? And it's the bus industry's glamorous annual awards night. A bit like the Oscars of the bus world, I suppose. Where East Yorkshire have a chance of winning one of the top honours. Angela Ribbon. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Oh. East Yorkshire Motor Services is the country's largest family-run bus company. It's been serving the community since 1926. Thank you all the very protect Yeah, well. Have a nice day. The centre of the company's operations is Hull, and this time every year, one of Europe's biggest travelling fairs comes to town. It's ginormous. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people. It's, honestly, it's unbelievable. Hot dogs and burgers, then you go on a ride. <laughs> Over the next week, three quarters of a million people will travel to the fair. To take advantage, the bus company runs special services. In charge of the operation is supervisor Brian Page. I like to be near the atmosphere, seeing all the lights, and it's quite a good buzz, and I love that bit. I hate going on the rides. I, I went on it for the first time with my daughter, and I walked very well, and it was spinning and spinning, and so was my head. <laughs> and his partner, radio operator Simon Cowie. Yeah, loud and clear from Bridlington all the way in Sunny Hull. There's biscuits in the tin, chocolate digestives and everything else. Oh, chocolate. And creams, and but you can't have them because you're on your diet. Yeah. <laughs> His wife texts us all to say that we, he wasn't allowed to have any cakes or anything fattening. He was on a diet. She texts everybody at work to tell them that I'm on a diet. And... The worst bit is that it shows you how well thought of I am. Every single one of them texts the back saying, oh, yeah, it'll be a pleasure to grass him up. The company is relying on Brian and Simon to ensure the whole fair buses make a healthy profit. I need to pay rides like everybody else, so I want to try and get as many bums on seats as possible. But they're not the only bus company hoping to cash in. Bus giant Stagecoach will also be running whole fare services alongside East Yorkshire. We're never going to be as big an operator as Stagecoach are. They've got a lot more vehicles going on a lot more corridors than we have from the fair, but we can take the most passengers that we possibly can, and that's the aim that we've got. To succeed requires careful planning, so Brian gathers his troops. Right, guys, uh, just quick and simple. There's a stagecoach bus there, overtaking. 
don't just sit behind, just overtake him. I love the competition. They've got to be switched on. Brian is a man on a mission. You've checked everybody, every bus, haven't you? Right. Yeah. There's a water leak on one of the buses. He'll stop at nothing to get buses on the road. Good, isn't it? Love it. Love it. Can I say that one? 30 seconds, I'm with you. And to get passengers on seats. Everybody's got the buses now. Fingers crossed. It'll be a really good night. I'm buzzing. I can't wait for it now. Cheers, 687. Have a safe one. We'll see you in a while. Let the battle commence. The fair is in full swing, and even bus drivers with the night off have come to let their head. <laughs> it's like being in one of our buses. <laughs> I'm going to love you and leave you bright. Oh, I shall speak to you in a bit, mate. This is the more busiest end. Simon's got a nice cush to the end. Well, he's got to go that end to get all the pies and the sandwiches and the hot dogs. And he said he's trying to lose weight. See, look at that. How can he resist that? Look at it. I'm mean, going to look at that giant hot dog. They're not little ones, they're giant. But I'm going to be strong-willed tonight. I've got my figure to think of. The competition doesn't run services from Simon's end. So it's Brian who will go head to head in the battle for passengers. Well, that queue is there, that's where Stagecoach should stop. Our competitors. As you can see in the middle is ours. Because they've got the monopoly, they're right outside the entrance. I can't get outside the entrance, I've got to stay in the middle. Hopelessly outnumbered, the only way yeah, Brian can win go. customers is by arriving at the stand in front of the competition. That's where Simon comes in. At his end of the fair, the competition keeps buses on standby. If you look across the road, you'll see they've packed up already. So what they do is they pack them up over there and then uh, wait until they've got a gap on the stand. They've got a supervisor at the other end with Brian and he'll call them round. As soon as we see them moving, I'll call Brian, let him know to get one of ours in position. Because if there's people, especially if they've been waiting for a little bit, psychologically, they'll go on the first bus that arrives, and I want that to be ours. For the plan to work, Brian believes secrecy is the key and has come up with a code word. So on, Simon. Hi. Have the eagle landed? Eagle's landed is when we know stagecoach are moving. Once stagecoach are moving, I can get my buses in front of them. Brian loves his codes, words, doesn't he? There's no need for him. Stagecoach are miles away. They can't hear what we're on about. But uh, if he wants a code word, he can have a code word if it makes him feel better. As the competition pulls away, it's time to put the plan into action. One to Brian. Yeah, the eagle has landed, man. All right, mate, no problem. The eagles are on their way round. That means stagecoach are coming now. With a crowd of passengers waiting, this is Brian's chance to pick up vital revenue. All he needs is a bus. Control 777 location, please. Driver Rod Hebden is on his way to the stand. Uh, 777 he received. Should have been here by now. The clock's ticking. Brian to Tracy, could you locate 777 for us, please? If Brian doesn't get a bus here soon, he's going to miss out on the fares he so desperately needs. One of Europe's biggest travelling fares has come to Hull. With crowds of fairgoers waiting to get home, Supervisor Brian Page wants to get his bus to the stand ahead of their competitor's stagecoach. It should have been here, man. It's completely dead. But driver Rod is going nowhere. Have a look where 719 is, please, Trace. With the competition approaching, Brian must get another bus fast. Blank off and just get to us as quick as he can. Hopefully, I'll get another couple of buses in the next 10 minutes. But 
but it's too late. The competition gets in first, and Brian misses out on the passengers. Um, I like. We've had a couple of problems, teething problems. It's not been a very good night at all. At Simon's end, things aren't going well either. I'm very busy. You're very busy. Have you got no one? Two to town. Two? Yeah. <laughs> Two no. people? Yeah. Two? Oh. Two people. I slipped my wrist now. We're not making any money tonight. <laughs> With no passengers, Simon's attention turns to his diet. It's killing me watching people coming out with donuts, toffee apples, and somewhere around there's got a little pot filled with chocolate. Oh. Brian to Sam, are you receiving? <laughs> Two on Salmon. But for Simon. All right, mate, you got a cheeseburger, please? Yeah. The temptation's too much. Brian to Sam, are you receiving? It's absolutely bloody lovely. With the first night at an end, Brian will have to up his game if he's going to turn things around. In Scarborough during the summer season, the company runs a special open-top bus service along the seafront. There you go. Paul Fryatt is the seafront supervisor. Six days a week, his job is to get as many people as possible on the open toppers. Uh, front, you in there, girls. Oh, hey, what have we got? 50th, who are we? Six, 50, 60? Have you been on the open top buses today? <laughs> There's one here, look. We can get a lot. How are they? They're enjoying themselves. That's what we like to see. Everybody on Scarborough must enjoy themselves, and hopefully next time they come back, it'll be a nice day, and they'll travel on their bus. But now... Summer's coming to an end. It's not weather for open top buses, is it? And the season's drawing to a close. Oh, it's awful. Don't like oh. this time of year. Chip shop shut, casino shut, fun fair shut. All IBL right. she's getting ready to shut. Well, we'll be open. You'll be open. We'll be open. With no passengers, Paul must find other ways to amuse himself. <laughs> I need a set of these. We're not letting fishes in. Can I have a tea? <laughs> yeah, I love my job on the seafront. It's the most enjoyable job I've done for a lot of years. You know? <laughs> but Paul's work on the seafront means he only gets one day off a fortnight to spend with his wife, Roz. But the moles ain't thinking much to this. The mole. There's only one way to kill a mole. So Jasper Carrot said, blow its bloody head off. I'm going a different way. I'm doing the Dracula bit with a stake. So he's come to a difficult decision. Just that you've, you're never here. You're always at work all the time. I'm always on my own. Mm, I know, I know that. Mm. Should be able to get weekends off, shouldn't we, and get away and that, but yeah. we don't get, it, does, it doesn't don't allow for that, does it, really? No. I love it down the seafront. There's no two ways about that. But my wife is my priority, so unfortunately now I've had to ask that I'll come off of the seafront next season, 2014, um, because I would just like to have one day off a week. Paul will now return to being a bus driver. Me, Kate, the wind's gone and everything oh, now. Simon. It's sad, yeah. I've, I've, been, I've totally enjoyed the three years I've supervised down here. I really have. Um, and I should miss it, miss it so much, but, you know, you, you know, you have to move on. All that's left is for Paul to organise his leaving party. And he's going to make sure he goes out with a bang. In Hull, at the depot, an army of engineers works round the clock to keep the buses on the road. Oh, shit. In charge of this team is Chief Engineer Derek Bradley. If we don't keep his fleet maintained, that means we've no, no vehicles on the road picking passengers up. From big jobs... We need to urgently... I want them doing by end of week, please. What you've got to remember is if one night goes up in smoke, we've got a problem. 
to small jobs. We're going to have a look at that toilet before you go on holiday. Upstairs. We're going to do it yesterday, weren't it? Yeah. I just never got around to it. No. Else. Derek has his own special way of running things. You know, I've got a philosophy that if I come down here at 3 o'clock and they're all playing football, I know the job's running and it's fine. I can go back in my office and go back to sleep. Derek's unique approach seems to be paying off. The Route 1 Bus Awards are coming up, one of the biggest events in the busman's calendar. And Derek has been nominated for Bus Engineer of the Year. We still don't know who entered me. We still haven't got a clue who entered me. So that was whoever it was, thank you very much. When I find you, you're dead. <laughs> His nomination might be something to do with the way he deals with unexpected problems. Uh, this is 6x3, one of our double deckers, hit a tree on Cottingham Road in Hull. What kind of tree was it? A big one. I've been in this game 40 odd years and I've never seen that amount of damage done by a tree. Or even a bridge. In this case, he's hit upon a radical solution. Graham, we've decided this accident now, instead of doing it, we're going to turn it into an open topper. Right. Uh... Derek's plan is to cut off the damaged roof and transform the double decker into an open top bus. He's putting his accident repairmen, Graham and Glenn, on the job. My guys are skilled chaps. They're very good at what they do. They are kitted out with all the latest gadgets. We've got this really high-tech machine. Oh, yeah. Brand new on the market. <laughs> it's called a hacksaw. <laughs> We've never had one of these before. It's a mini grinder. Well, it's got a, a disc in it for cutting aluminium, so we're going to have a go with this. Yeah, we're a bit behind the times, I yeah. think. Uh, we, we're old school. We don't, yeah. We're not sort of up to date with some of the more modern I'm gear, I now. guess, really. There you go. Easy. Easy. Yeah. But nevertheless, they make light work of the roof. Stop. Down. Ready? One, two, three, go! That was fun. It's fun to come to work in the morning, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> bit of hacksawing. Yeah. Bit of grinding. Hand rolling. There we are. Chucked them over the back. Job done. Derek's unorthodox approach has paid off. By next summer, he'll have another open top bus at a fraction of the cost of repairing the double decker. It's time for a tea break. And Derek's nomination is the talk of the depot. I want him to win it so he has to do an acceptance speech. Because A, they won't understand him, and it'll go on for about an hour and a half. <laughs> won't it? How we doing yeah. it? It's good, isn't it? Yeah, it's awesome. It's good, especially at his age. He's 103, don't forget. <laughs> he won't like that, will he? <laughs> the nomination is a huge honour. Despite not showing it, I am proud, actually. But don't forget, a lot of it's down to my staff in there. I can't do my job without them. But have they all done enough for Derek to be crowned the finest bus engineer in the land? One of Europe's biggest travelling fairs has come to Hull. With thousands of visitors flocking to the fair, supervisor Brian Page is desperate to earn some money for the company. My objective today is actually getting quite a lot of people on the seats, bums on seats, to keep my boss happy <laughs> and make me a good living as well. But so far this week, Brian hasn't had the passenger numbers he hoped for and he feels, at times, his competitors are taking up too much space on the bus stand. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! We need to get in there. Get in forward, I've got my bus coming. I've got my bus coming. I might be small, but I've got a gob on me. I want to be close as I can to the entrance for my customers. Well, if I go too far away from the bus stop, nobody's going to go on me, because they've got to walk that couple of yards more. They're not going to do that. I want you to make it really, really tight. Desperate for passengers, he does something drastic. Indicate you're coming to turn left. Ready? 
keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Don't worry about them, keep coming. Brian orders his bus to pull in at a tight angle to be nearer the passengers. Keep coming, lovely, lovely, that'll do nicely. But in doing so, he's now blocked stagecoaches' buses. Yeah, it's OK. Oh, it's really bad. Is that all right? Is that all right? Uh, is that... Really, we're always over the white line. We're always over the white line, all the time. No, don't worry, don't worry. You'll get your bus at the back. Sorry, mate, don't, don't film this. Don't film it, I'm just going to have a word with the driver. The move hasn't gone down well. Hi, Rob, it's Brian. I've got our bus in, right in front of them. The driver was approached by their supervisor and had a go at it, said it was a terrible driving. Brian's competitors allege he's performed a potentially reckless manoeuvre. Um, there's been... There's a bit of eruptions there at the moment. I'm trying to do a manoeuvre in, and all hell's breaks loose. How serious is that allegation? Well, it's, uh, the allegation is quite serious. If the complaint is upheld, Brian could find himself in hot water. This week, East Yorkshire Motor Services are running special buses to Hull Fair. But Supervisor Brian Page has had a fallout with their neighbours, bus company Stagecoach. <laughs> All summer, Brian has put himself in the firing line. So if I weren't switched on then, passengers would have been waiting for a bus. Doing everything he can to help the company. <laughs> All right, don't worry, I've got it. But now Brian's run into trouble. Stagecoach have reported him for performing a reckless manoeuvre. The matter is so serious, it's been passed all the way up to operations manager Ray Hill. Um, we've, we've just come in at a sharp angle. So it could, the way they could look at it, it's a, a dangerous manoeuvre. But it is, then they need to look at that situation down there, because it is tight for spaces, and that's what I'm going to try and put over to Ray. Uh, are you nervous? No, 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 not whatsoever. Um, I'll just, whatever comes, comes. Come in, Brian. <coughs> Morning, Ray. Morning. You well? Morning, yes, thanks. Do you want to grab a seat? Yeah, certainly will. Right, what I know about this so far, Brian, is that uh, Stagecoach rang our commercial manager on Saturday morning uh, to enquire, I will say, uh, about an incident which occurred on Friday evening. Mm. Um, so if you could just draw through and explain slowly exactly what happened on this plan for me, please. This is the main entrance here. Stagecoach of this here, at the back. What happens so is... he's got his lights off? It, no, he's not even on the stand, it's 51F. He's not even there. So you've only got a 31 and a 43F on the stand now. Right, OK. But what they did... That 43F was here, yeah? yeah, and that 31 was there. So I wanted to go here. Yeah. So that so railing's there. The 43F went around... No, no, you're getting a, 40, a 31F and a 43, right? Yeah. There's only two buses there. Forget the 51, he's not even there yet. He's still coming round. I think we just need to run through the CCTV. Yeah, if you can. Still at a loss as to what actually happened, Ray hopes the CCTV will clear things up. What appears to have happened is that she appears to have trapped in a stagecoach bus and you as the acting supervisor there sure. would have been best advised to have pulled him forward mm. because if you see in front of the lay-by there, there's an awful lot of space there mm -hmm. that she could have pulled him to. Sure. And if you look at this white line here, yep. in the outline of her bus, uh, you can see that her bus is parked at an angle there for at least 15 minutes. Sure. Which uh, isn't the best place to be parked at an angle sure. with the back end of the bus overhanging a dual carriageway. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, no problem. OK, so yeah, sure. just a suggestion for the future, mm. um, if we can maybe no, do that. Good point. Yeah, okay, no problem. Uh, 
any questions on that? Anything? No, any no, comments no, you, you've got to say? No, um, yeah, we could have gone down a little bit more, but it's just one of the things that happened on the night. And yeah. We've got five more passengers extra, which was up. For Ray, it's no laughing matter. Uh, an incident has occurred. Um, I think, to a large degree, we're responsible, and uh, we just now need to go back to stagecoach and um, apologise, basically. Ray's made some good points. All I, all I was trying to do at the end was try and, try and make as much money as uh, I can for the company. Boss Peter Ship has worked at East Yorkshire Motor Services for 34 years. And running a bus company is more than just a job. I've now got just, I think, just over about 1,200. And when I was sort of 11, 12, I suppose, I used to actually play with them on the floor. I don't tend to do that now very often. I play with the big ones, you know. The Route 1 National Bus Awards are coming up. And Peter's chief engineer has been nominated for an award. This is about not showing it. I am proud, actually. But the news gets even better. The entire company has been nominated for an award of its own. Oh, well, we're in. We're one of the four finalists for the Large Bus Operator of the Year award, so fingers crossed. The award is one of the greatest accolades that any bus company can receive. A bit like the Oscars of the bus world, I suppose. Yeah, it'd be good for the company, you know, to think that all we've got the most company of the year in England. East Yorkshire are the only family-run company up for the award, and the staff are feeling proud. It's a family-based company. It's more of a friendly atmosphere, you're not just a name and number. On a personal basis, I enjoy working here. Because it's a smaller, individual company, you do sort of get that almost family feeling. Peter's off to find out who they're up against for the award. But he's been distracted by an unusual looking coach. The toilet is under this seat, and the seat's been raised up to allow the toilet to go underneath it, which is a little bit odd. I might even try the toilet. Not, not literally, but. Excuse me. It's certainly not particularly high because I can't stand up in it. <coughs> so. Very odd. I don't quite understand why that's happened in this design. But really quite difficult to get into. And out of. Finally, Peter tracks down one of his rivals for the award. Of course, we're up, we're up against them for large bus operator of the year tonight. So. I understand so, yeah. yeah. And they look like a classy outfit. Very nice. It's um, trimmed differently, and uh, certainly some of the electric kit on is certainly worth looking at. And the seats are very nice. They're this e-leather. Yeah, they're a good company. If I see their MD, I might smile nicely and shake his hand. I'll sort of shake his hand out tonight as well, anyway, whoever wins. If East Yorkshire are going to win the award, they'll have to fend off some stiff competition. In Scarborough, after three years on the seafront, this is Paul Fryatt's last season as supervisor, and he wants to go out in style. I'm going to have a little party, I think, just a little, little, um, just a little get together with uh, a few people I met down here and worked with over the last three years, I think. During a roller coaster summer, Paul has given his all in the battle to get passengers on seats. You go on there, darling. Okay, you go in the middle then. There have been days of triumph <laughs> and moments of disaster. Hey, Westwood. Sounds like it's jammed by sounds of it. Oh, no. What it means is the job's knackered, if we're allowed to say that. Cheers. Friends have been made. Do you want to borrow a couple of buses for tonight, Paul, just so you can finish your shifts, all right? And rivalries contested. Oh, no need for that. It'll be, uh, it'll be a quieter place without him, so that's the thing that I shall miss. Go on, see. <laughs> In a caravan park on the outskirts of Scarborough, 
the people of the seafront are gathering to say goodbye. Yeah, please come down soon as you get yourself a drink. Thanks for coming up to a really nice of you, thank you. All right, mate. Smashing. Supervisor Allen is soaking up the atmosphere. Dawn's made a special effort. And Andy, the controller, is getting a bit emotional. He's done it for the past three or four years. Just sorry to see him go, really. To mark the occasion, Paul has something special planned. He's going to perform his own stand-up routine, but no one's quite sure what to expect. Oh, I don't know. There'll be a few surprises, I think, yeah. And rumours are beginning to spread. Oh, yeah, Paul's stripping tonight, isn't he? Cos once he's had a bit to drink, he starts stripping. Well, that's worth, worth stopping for then, isn't it? Let's uh, get the show on the road. That's what we need to do now. It'd be right. I'm feeling all right. Where's my beer? <laughs> With all his friends waiting, the moment has arrived. Ladies and gentlemen, can you put your hands together? Oh, for oh. Riot the Riot. I can't see myself think. That's better. <laughs> I can see you now. Do you want that? Do you want me to turn the lights off? <laughs> After the shock of his costume, Paul tries to win the crowd over with a good bus joke. You know, this woman walks across to the driver, says, Ruby driver, Blackpool. So he puts his paper down. Says, no, Scarborough. So we're not going to Blackpool. Said, we're not going to Blackpool, all right? So we've got Blackpool on the front. So we've got luxury travel on the back. We ain't getting any. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much and good night. The act is a success, but Paul has mixed feelings. Now I'm finished on the seafront, I do feel lost with that job not going to be next year now, and so I'm going to miss it terrible. And so it, it brought a sad note to the end of a really good, fun night. I have to move on. That's what I'm going to try and do. Move on. But keep the smile. <laughs>
minute you see him at Albatab, just bring yourself down. But with relations already strained, he can't afford to upset his neighbours. Come down very, very slowly. They're ready to move. Brian sees his chance. Nice and slow. And finally, executes his master plan. That's a damn nice one. Nice one. That was perfect. As people pour out of the fair, Brian has as many passengers as he could want. Good for you, mate. All right, get you in the town. It's good, good atmosphere. Really good atmosphere, very busy. If he's got a good load, then it's an indication that we're going to have a good night. And looking at that, yeah, that's a very good load. How many, Martin? 72 passengers. My God. John, put yourself as a 66. I've got a huge queue down here, mate. Look at that money, yeah? All of them are paying. It's a brilliant sight. Take my trousers, gone, as always. <laughs> Just split my trousers. <laughs> as the night draws to a close, it's time for Brian and Simon to check the figures. Hiya, mate. All right, mate, how are we doing then? We've, we've done about £3,000, and you've done about £3,500. <laughs> right, well done, mate. Nice one. Very happy. Very happy. The fair has finished, and we're up on last year, and that's what I wanted. Wouldn't be the fair if we didn't have chaos. Wouldn't have the fair if we didn't have our competitors. It's been a great week. Fully enjoyed it. Great people to uh, come from Long Hill. I've enjoyed it. Drivers enjoyed it. I'm on my way home now. In Birmingham, the night of the Route 1 Bus Awards has arrived. The great and the good of the bus world have gathered to pay tribute to the finest busmen in the land. East Yorkshire is up for Large Bus Operator of the Year. Derek is also up for Bus Engineer of the Year and in celebratory mood. I'd be chuffed if I win it, uh, especially at my time of life. I wouldn't have a drink. But Peter has found another reason to be excited. I believe Angela Rippon is here tonight doing the presentation, so uh, I'm far more excited about winning now than I was earlier, so uh, to be presented by, by the legs of television, which would be good, wouldn't it? The ceremony is about to begin. It gives me great pleasure to introduce you to Angela Rippon. Oh, well, I have to say, that's encouraging. I've got the fan club in, obviously. Thank you very much. <laughs> Derek's big moment has arrived. Our winner is highly regarded by his peers for his first-class engineering skills and dedication to his role. The winner of Bus Engineer of the Year Award is Jason Dixon. No, I didn't know, to be honest. It'd be lovely if I had it done. But I am. I've got to the finals. I'm quite happy with that. But the biggest award of the night is still to come. Best Large Bus Operator of the Year. The company's nomination is a huge honour and Peter's feeling a flush of pride. At the end of the day, if you haven't got good staff, there's no way you're going to win that award. No way. Uh, you wouldn't even get in the finals. If your staff didn't do it for you day in, day out, you wouldn't come anywhere close. All summer, Peter's staff have tried to keep the people of Yorkshire moving. From the birds I go. You say I've gone the wrong way? Yes, you have. Whatever the world has thrown at them. Bus won't move. Riding through the lows. Yeah, I've just lost a drag race with a disability skipper. Big Tillu. And the highs. I'm now a fully qualified bus driver. Yes. <laughs> Job sorted. You get a kiss. Thank you. <laughs> Come on! Now their tireless efforts could be rewarded. 
Right, the, the job of operating buses may appear to be relatively straightforward from the outside. Really? <laughs> After all, it's a simple matter, turning a bus out in the morning with a driver who collects the fares. But you all know that today's industry is very complex. So, the best large bus operator in Britain is... Nottingham City Transport. Oh, right. yeah. Sadly, the company have just missed out on the top spot. But with the formalities over, Derek sets his eyes on the real prize. Can I have a picture with Andrew Rippon? Go and ask him, please. Please, yeah. Are you serious? I'm serious, yeah. Oh, dearie me. Oh, you gave me all going Let's not mess about. Come on. Tell her, but, but tell her, but come tell her, on. tell her she's safe, cos I'd rather have me dinner. No, I'm not, come on. It looks like the evening might be a success after all. Yes. What trouble does he get me into? This I get into trouble, <laughs> boss. Don't worry. Stick with me and we'll get into trouble. <laughs> you have your second. You want me Ready? Look at the camera. There you go. You're very kind. But well, we were finalists. Yes, you were. Twice. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Pep. Oh, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to have a hug instead. Oh, all right. I'm going to have a hug. Thank you very much. <laughs> Pleasure. We're in trouble tomorrow. Who organised that? Oh, well, it was a good evening. Uh, we didn't win, but, you know, we were in the finalists. As we said before, you know, being there is, is good. And there's always next year, of course. Peter and myself got up on stage with Andrew Rippon. So that's made his night. We haven't won up, but at least we've been on stage with Angela Rippon. So I thought that was magic. Yeah. Back in Yorkshire, the night is drawing to a close. The last drivers are finishing their shifts and the bosses are being put to bed. Ready to do it all again tomorrow.